good morning friends i again welcome you for our next lecture on nature and elements of poetry william henry hudson in his book an introduction to the study of literature in chapter number 3 has discussed this particular topic of poetry and we as the students of literature it is mandatory for all of us to study the nature and elements of poetry because when we were discussing our previous chapters in one of the chapters we discussed that we as the students of literature must know what are the important forms of literature friends the authors whom we are studying they try to express their ideas their emotions through different forms of literature we have various forms of literature like poetry drama novel short story essay biographies autobiographies travel logs these are the different forms of literature among all these forms of literature poetry is considered as the most ancient art because if you examine all the ancient literatures of all cultures of the world whether it is greek culture whether it is indian culture whether it is british culture whether it is latin or roman culture in most of the ancient times in most of the cultures the literature which was written was written in the poetic form so we may say that poetry is the most ancient art among all forms of literature and when we are studying this english literature we must know what a poetry is what the definition of poetry is and what are the important elements or features or characteristics of poetry are so that is what we want to discuss in this lecture today uh one minute so the first thing that comes to the mind before us is the study of the difference between prose and poetry because if you want to understand what poetry is you must first of all understand the difference between prose and poetry because all kinds of expressions are done in these two different manners in literature either the author writes and expresses his thoughts his ideas in prose or he expresses his ideas in poetic form which is known as poetry so we have these two important forms of presentation of expression prose and poetry 
and the difference between this prose and poetry is not so much difficult to understand because poetry and prose these are the common forms of literature where prose is written with with words paragraphs and they do not have any metrical composition metrical structures but on the other hand poetry is a form of literature which is based on particular form which is which creates rhyme which creates rhythm with the help of meter so the basic difference between prose and poetry is that we have sentences and paragraphs on the one hand in prose and on the other hand we have some lines some stanzas which are full of rhythm which is full of metrical composition and this is called poetry so we know even a child understands by just having a look at the paper the child can decide whether it is prose or poetry but friends this is just an external view of prose and poetry which is not so much important we must know and understand the poetry from inside what makes poetry a poetry or what are the essential elements of poetry that we need to understand first when we are studying poetry there are different definitions of poetry available to us you know this question what a poetry is it is easy to understand but it is difficult to define well there are different critics available to us in literature who have tried to give various definitions of poetry and all are suggesting at some of the common things so if you want to understand the characteristics of poetry when you examine the definitions of poetry different definitions of poetry you can call out you can pick some you can pick some characteristics from these definitions so first of all we begin with this definition on the screen you can see mill who is a critic of english literature he has defined poetry by saying that poetry is the thought and words in which emotion spontaneously embodies itself i repeat it again poetry is the thought and words in which emotion spontaneously embodies itself so here in this definition mill talks about the three terms number 1 poetry is the thought poetry is the thought and second he says the words poetry is the use of words which words the words which carry some thoughts and this thoughts okay these words which are carrying the thoughts in this you know emotions spontaneous emotions spontaneous means all of a sudden naturally 
the natural emotions come out and mix with these thoughts it is called poetry according to mill i repeat it again in in my own words let me explain this in short again mill wants to say that poetry carries two things what two things number 1 thoughts ideas and number 2 natural spontaneous emotions and these two are carried by the words and such words are known as poetry i hope the definition is clear to you let's go to the next definition macole macole has defined poetry in a different manner he says that poetry is an art of employing words poetry is an art of using words in such a special manner in such a manner as to produce an illusion or the imagination the art of doing by means of words what the painter does by the use of colors so here you know macaulay has tried to compare two different arts art of writing poetry and the art of painting he says that what a painter does with the help of colors the same job is done with a help done by the poets with the help of words because words are the tools of the poet as brush and color are the tools of the painter what does the painter do the painter produces that imagination which he imagined he produces that imagination in his picture which when we see we also as the viewers of the picture we also imagine the same thing this picture has such quality that we can imagine what the poet imagined in the same manner the poet when writes poetry he uses words he employs his words but he uses the words in such a manner that it creates a kind of illusion on the imagination means he creates an imaginative picture before our mental eyes when we read poetry we visualize what is written by the poets we imagine we start imagining what the poet imagined when he wrote this poetry so in a way you can say that macaulay has compared the art of writing poetry with the art of painting and he in short he wants to say that you know it creates the pictures of imagination in the minds of the readers i remember one popular saying in english literature it is said that painting is a mute poetry and poetry is a speaking picture here also this painting and poetry are compared i repeat this again it is believed by some of the scholars that painting 
is a mute poetry and poetry is a speaking picture sir philip sidney an important critic of english literature who lived during 16th century in england when he defines poetry he also says that poetry is an art of imitation a speaking picture with this and to teach and delight he says that poetry is an art of imitation imitation means copy he says that the poet imitates this life this nature this society and this imitation must be a speaking picture i mean the words must create sounds in poetry so it is all about the play of words writing poetry is all about the play of words and macaulay also believes that it is the special use of words in such a manner that it has the power to produce the illusion on the imagination it is the art of using words in such a manner as to give the effect the same effect what the painter does in his poetry let's move on to discuss another definitions of poetry carlyle he also wants to say that poetry is a musical thought here carlyle talks about the two important things number one he says poetry is musical and number two this poetry must have one very important thought in it poetry according to carlyle is the presentation of thought in the musical manner so according to carlyle poetry carries music with it music means what music takes rhyme with it music takes rhythm with it music takes meter with it and the poetry according to him is the presentation of thought but this thought must be musical it's a very small simple definition of poetry given by carlyle let's take another definition given by p b shali his full name is parshi b c shali p b shali is a romantic poet of the period of romanticism 1798 to 1830 this small period of 32 years is known as the period of romantic revival age of romanticism and in this age during this age there were some important poets like p b shelley william wordsworth as to coleridge john keats they were writing beautiful poetry shelley was also a poet shelley as a poet has defined poetry by saying that poetry is the expression of imagination simple things according to him poetry expresses the imagination of the poet so far we discussed three four definitions of poetry from all these definitions of poetry we can understand that poetry is the special use of words why special use of words because poetry is a musical thought special use of words means poetry takes meter there is a use of meter rhyme in in these words which makes it musical poetry also carries some thoughts some ideas with it 
and poetry must have the capacity to create a kind of illusion create a kind of picture in the minds of the readers what picture the same picture which the poet imagined when he was writing poetry so imagination is an important aspect of any poetry number 1 thought or ideas is again an important aspect of poetry number 2 and metrical composition meter use of meter rhyme and rhythm is also very important in poetry which which makes it poetry this is number 3 this is what we have understood so far from the definitions that we have discussed let's move on to discuss another definition it's there on the screen this definition is given by s t coleridge again coleridge as i told you is a romantic poet lived during the age of romanticism s t coleridge says that poetry is the antithesis of science having for its immediate object pleasure not truth now here coleridge compares poetry with science according to him the immediate object of science is truth object means function goal motto what is the object of science what is the function of science the function of science is to tell the truth is to present the truth as it is and what is the function of poetry according to coleridge coleridge says that the function of poetry is to give pleasure not truth so this is the basic difference between science and poetry according to coleridge and that's why coleridge says that poetry is in the antithesis is the a antithesis of science it is quite opposite to science if one is the east the other is the west what poetry is science is not and what science is poetry is not because both have different functions one aims at achieving truth and the other aims at achieving pleasure or delight so coleridge here wants to say that poetry is an art which is opposed to the works of science poetry is an art which is opposed to the works of science and it must give pleasure to the readers so here coleridge mainly talks about the function of poetry anyways let's move on to discuss the next definition given by his contemporary william wordsworth wordsworth a contemporary of shelley coleridge he also lived during the same age of romanticism according to wordsworth poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility poetry according to him is an overflow of emotions feelings but what kind of emotions not common simple emotions he talks about the strong emotions powerful emotions poetry is the expression of powerful emotions and this powerful emotions it comes out naturally spontaneously without any efforts so poetry according to wordsworth is a is an art which comes naturally in the poet 
But there is a problem. If you if you take this part of the definition, then there is a problem. Because when when there is an overflow of emotions, say for example, I am roaming somewhere uh, on the seashore, and I, my heart leaps up when I see the beautiful scenario of the beautiful scene of the ocean. Okay, my heart is full of emotions. I become so happy, you know, that there is an overflow of emotions. And when at that time, say for example, I start writing poetry, is it possible? No, it's not possible. Because it might happen that when there is an overflow, when I am standing at the seashore, when there is an overflow of emotions in my heart, I might not have a pen with me, I might not have a paper with me. Or if at all I have a pen and paper with me at that time, when I start writing, because writing is something which is mechanical, when I start writing that, what happens? My overflow stops because writing comes from here. It's a matter of thinking, it's a matter of intelligence. And emotions come from here. It's a matter of feeling. When this starts working, this stops. So the overflow stops. So one cannot write poetry at that particular time. And that's why William Wordsworth further in his definition says that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. Fine. But it is recollected in tranquility. At that time the poet does not write poetry. But when the poet goes home back, goes back home, you know, uh, after visiting, visiting that beautiful scene, uh, the seashore, the ocean and all, he becomes so happy, there is an overflow of emotions when he comes back home at night when he is sitting on his sofa or when he is lying on his bed, when the atmosphere is tranquil, mark this word which is on the screen, tranquility. When the atmosphere is tranquil, tranquil means peaceful, peaceful. When there is no disturbance, when there is a peace of mind, you recollect. Recollect means you try to remember that experience. You recollect that experience and then you start writing your emotions on a piece of paper that becomes your poetry according to William Wordsworth okay so William Wordsworth mainly talks about the emotions and these emotions must be natural it is an overflow of strong powerful emotions and this overflow must be natural it is not by efforts that these emotions come when there is a natural overflow spontaneous overflow of emotions and then after some time when your mind is cool and calm and peaceful when there is tranquility you pen down your emotions on a piece of paper that becomes poetry according to William Wordsworth. Another definition which is on the screen you can see is given by Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe has defined poetry and said that poetry is the rhythmic creation of beauty. Now, Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, has mainly talked about the two important things here. One, poetry is a rhythmic creation. That means he talks about the use of rhyme, the use of meter in poetry. It's a creation, but it's a... <coughs> sorry. It's a creation, but it's a rhythmic creation. Rhythmic creation of what? According to him, it's a rhythmic creation of beauty. Poetry, according to Edgar Allan Poe, aims at achieving beauty. So poetry must present 
beauty in it so these are the two important things for edgar allan poe use of rhythmic words and the presentation of something that is beautiful okay let's take another definition by professor carthaw this professor says that poetry is the art of producing pleasure producing pleasure by the just expression of imaginative thought in metrical language again the previous definitions which we discussed this definition also you know talks about the same elements which we discussed in some other definitions according to him poetry is an art art of what it is the art of producing pleasure so for here again he talks about the function of poetry that poetry aims at achieving pleasure remember coleridge we just now discussed coleridge coleridge says that the immediate object of poetry is pleasure not truth you know coleridge this uh, compared poetry with science and said that the object of poetry is to give pleasure here this professor cotthop also says the same thing that the poetry is an art of producing pleasure among the readers how how this pleasure is created the pleasure is created by the just just means proper proper expression of imaginative thought and this imaginative thought here he talks about two things imagination and thought some thought must be there in poetry imagination must be there in the poetry and this imaginative thought must be expressed in metrical language with the help of meter rhyme or rhythm or melody the poet expresses the imaginative thought and this expression of imaginative thought according to professor cotthoff it gives pleasure to the readers so we have discussed so far different definitions of poetry and when we look at all these seven eight nine definitions of poetry you know we can come to the conclusion that poetry is an art which carries thoughts emotions imagination and this combination is presented is expressed in such a manner that you know there is a use of metrical composition there is the use of rhyme meter rhythm melody and it is presented in such a manner that it is it gives pleasure to the reader it delights the reader this is the uh, gist of all the definitions that we have discussed so far okay so when you read all these definitions you know you come to a conclusion that in fact these things like imagination emotions you know thoughts meter rhyme these are actually the elements of poetry these are actually the most important characteristics of poetry these are the things which make poetry a uh, poetry in the real sense of the word friends here we end up for today the rest part of this discussion that means uh, in the next lecture we will discuss the elements of poetry that portion that portion will discuss now onwards in the next lecture so far i hope the different definitions of poetry are clear to you so friends stay home
स्टे सेफ गुड बाय थैंक यू